Hey, what's up guys? Stan here from Rocky Creek. It's been a little bit since we've been with you all. For those of you that follow us on Facebook and Instagram, uh, you are well aware that things with the pigs have gone south. The piglets themselves, they're doing pretty good, but Big Mama has, she's really struggling. Uh, we're now at, let's see, everything first started on Saturday. We're three and a half days into trying to treat her and address the situation. Um, so let's go over here. I need to give her her pain medication. That is one of the things that she is getting right now out of three different medications. So let me give that to her. Let me also check on their water status because it is very warm today. It's about 80 some degrees. And so I wanna make sure they got plenty of water. Once I get her that, then we'll talk a little bit and let me share with you what's been going on and kind of what our plan is moving forward. So let's go. Now the pain medicine that we're giving her is, I believe it's called Meloxicam. And my understanding is, you know, it's fairly, it's fairly strong and it's also geared towards the size of the animal. And it's two pills that you put in with their feed, but obviously she's in there with the piglets. So what I found that's working pretty good to make sure she gets it and not the piglets, is I've been sticking them in a small piece of banana and really wait for it to open her mouth and I just chuck it on in there. So let's see if it continues to work that well. So I've just been doing it like that. Come here, big mama. Let's get you this. Oh, don't bite my fingers. And then I just try to watch and make sure I don't see somehow a piece fall on the ground. I know. Is that good? All right. Come here, piggies. I gotta save these guys for their own good. They wanna get to her food, she gets mad. I watched her straight sling one of them a good three feet away with her snout this morning. So I try to put some space between them and her until we can get them separated. So, but like I said, it's super hot. Pool is empty and this water's empty. So we're gonna get those filled up real quick. So guys, while her pool's filling up and while they're eating over here, let's talk a little bit about what's going on because you're thinking, she looks like she's doing great. And today may be the first day that we're finally doing great. I don't know, time will tell. But let's talk about what happened. So on Saturday, I came out in the morning to feed. And Big Mama, even though she is smaller than both uh, Mater and Olivia, she, when it's feed time, buddy, it sounds like she's busting through Mater and Olivia's house. She's Mater and Olivia are fighting over uh, black oil sunflower seeds right now. But anyways, Big Mama though, when it's time to feed, she's hammer hard on this fence here. I mean, just hitting it, climbing it. When she's ready to eat, she's ready to eat. That's why she's Big Mama. So I usually have to feed her first to get her to chill out while I take care of Mater and Olivia. Well, that morning, that was usual. Everything was fine. Uh, we were actually that afternoon going to be heading over to some friends of ours who just got some baby goats and we were going to go check them out and they got a new horse. And I told my wife, I said, let me go feed the pigs real quick since I don't know how long we're going to be gone. And I'm glad I came out earlier than normal to do so. Because when I came out here, there's a little space between the temporary shelter for Big Mama and the fence that separates her pen from the next pen. So right here is a little space I'm talking about, and the wind's blowing this a little bit, but it's probably about a two foot area. And she was all the way in that back corner. So I see her in that corner and she's sitting upright and her head is slightly tilted like so. And it just looks like she's kind of breathing or making noises, I wasn't sure. And I had her feed dish and it was like nobody was home. She was just sitting there doing whatever it was. So I walked over towards her with the feed bowl and I noticed when I got close, 
her eyes were quivering and shaking really quickly and her mouth was doing the same. And it was raining that day, of course, which doesn't help at all. And it was a little bit cooler. It was in the 50s. And I'm trying to move her, and she is like stiff as a board, not wanting to move. After about 15 or 20 seconds of trying, I finally get her to stagger out of there into the opening to where I can see her more. And I could not figure out what was wrong with her. Uh, she started walking around, seemed very disoriented, just going in circles. It's like she was looking for food or water, but wasn't going to get it. And I didn't know what was going on. Uh, I do know of, you gonna come bother me now? One of my greatest fears ever since I've had Cooney Coonies is salt toxicity. Because if a Cooney Cooney goes without water uh, for, for not a very great length of time, especially on a warm day, uh, they could very quickly have too much salt in their diet from lack of water. Or if they eat something that is very high in sodium, it could cause issues. There shouldn't be anything that she ate. And she had three different things of water to choose from. And I can always tell when she's been drinking because not only is it lower, but usually it's dirty because her face is dirty or she lays in it, uh, which usually she'll drink a little bit then. And all that was the case. After this went on for about a minute or two, she seemed like she kind of came back to and she started eating like normal. And I thought, that's really weird. So after I saw this and I have immediate concern with her, I told my wife, hey, you all go on and go see them. I need to stay back with her and figure out what's going on. So I checked her temperature and at that time she didn't have a temperature. Now I will say I got a new thermometer and I'm not real confident in the accuracy of that thermometer. You know, I did it rectal, but even then the temperature was quite low. Uh, it, was, it was lower than even a normal range for a pig. So I'm not sure how much I believe what that thermometer said. So as I monitored her for about another 30 minutes, she ended up having another episode again. And when it happens, her mouth, she kind of freezes up standing. Her mouth starts quivering, her eyes starts quivering, her, her head will start raising up slightly, and then she'll start backing up all the way until she usually gets to the fence. And then she drops her haunches down, and then eventually she'll end up falling over. And she'll lay like that for about a minute or two and then she slowly starts to come back around and starts to go on like everything's normal. Um, so I didn't know what to do. I called the breeder. She was unaware of what could be causing that uh, for some advice. So then I, my next resort was to call the nearest university, which is the vet that we use for our animals. So talking to the vet and explaining the circumstances, she said that she's pretty confident it's gonna be neurological that's happening. And she said that that usually comes on through either Salt toxicity, which based off of our conversation, she didn't believe that to be the case. Um, or basically like a bad blood infection, um, which could have been strep or any various types of infections that pigs are prone to that if they get bad enough, it can cause neurological issues. But no matter which of the issues it was, they were still gonna recommend the same treatment protocol. Uh, they instructed me to go get penicillin because that was be a better option for her still having the piglets with her and that I was to give her eight milliliters of penicillin by injection intramuscularly twice a day. So that's what we did. I went to the nearest tractor supply and I got that. I administered the first dose that Saturday night and then we've been doing two doses a day since then. Well, as we progressed and we started looking more into things, I am very, very confident that Big Mama ended up with a bad case of mastitis and her two front teats. It went undetected by me, um, and I should have been more diligent in looking for that. And I think it got to the point that it got so bad that she's formed some form of an infection as a result of the mastitis being bad. Uh, she's got a couple sores on her teats where the piglets, I think, have been frustrated and biting at it, trying to get milk. And those could have became infected, which could have caused other infections within her body and or she could have developed, I believe, what they call milk fever. Um, but nonetheless, um, we weren't getting much progress after two days. And so on Monday morning, I called back to the vet 
and they've added into it the pain medication that I just gave her, but also an anti-inflammatory, which I believe was called Betamine, and that's an injectable as well. And so right now, Big Mama is getting three injections a day, two of penicillin and one of the Betamine, and then she's getting her pain medication on top of that. Thus far today, although I've only been around her for little bits of time throughout the day today, thus far today, I have yet to see her have an episode. I'm looking over here because she's laying in the water trough, and I'll show you that here in a minute. But we got a long way to go. Yesterday, she had, I personally saw her have an episode three times. Let's see if I can get y'all a good shot of this. So, so this right here is going to be one of the infected teats. It's almost as round as like a baseball, and when I feel it, it's quite hard. So when you look at these two teats, they're long and they're actually soft to the touch. But then when you come to this front one, it's very round and it's actually quite hard to the touch and you can see the sores that she's developed. Now on a positive note, I didn't get to kind of feel how hard they were this morning uh, because I had to be at work a little bit earlier than normal today. But even when I'm showing you them right now, they have actually, they're still hard compared to the back ones, but they have softened up tremendously since we've gotten that anti-inflammatory. So I'm hoping based off of her energy levels and these teeth softening up. Yeah, you people have been worried about you. I'm hoping we have finally turned the corner, which I can finally smile about it because there wasn't much smiling here for the last few days. And I'm pretty sure these little oinkers are going to be very happy too. I know, you hear that? I know, we're just playing. We're just playing. Okay? So guys, that's kind of the status on Big Mama. We've had tremendous improvement since getting the second round of medications. And I think those in conjunction with the penicillin's helping. But I'm trying not to be too overly excited. Because after seeing what I saw over the last few days, I really thought we were going to lose her. And I, I just want to make sure we don't have a relapse and that we get through this thing in the clear. Your peoples was worried about you. They were. You're going to be all right. Your breath smells awful. Are y'all trying to mess with my camera? Huh? Is your mama going to be okay? Is your mama going to be okay? Yeah. Y'all, if there's one thing that has been a positive through this experience has been the amount that I have learned about emergency care for your animals. Because some people ask, like, why did you share that video on Instagram that showed Big Mama in such a bad way? Like, why would you show that? And I try to tell people the reason why I showed it is because I've never had this situation with a pig, and I want people to see what I'm seeing, although it's hard to watch, and although, yes, it's sad, especially if it's your animal or you're an animal lover, and even though we raise some of our animals here for food, we do care about our animals greatly. But I do it because I want people that may be like me that have zero experience about any kind of lifestyle like this before doing it at an adult age that you can have the ability to hopefully care for your animals because, yes, I have a university that's an hour away, and although it's an hour away, they're not always available. And many of you who are small scale backyard homesteaders or farmers don't have a large animal vet available. And so I'm hoping by sharing this experience and what medications we had, what I saw, what caused some of these issues would hopefully help you be prepared to deal with it in the future because I was not prepared. I had to learn on the fly, but since through this process, I have learned so much. I have learned what other things to keep on hand in my sort of care package or first aid kit that I have for our livestock and our animals. And now since doing this, there are some things that I will always have ready on hand as a staple for when I have these situations going on. And even though the university gave me the advice of what to do, they didn't come out here. So I still had to acquire the stuff. Now the two other medications I needed, I couldn't just get at a farm store, so I had to drive to the university to get it. Um, but I wanna share this through this and I wanted to, to show you all this, even though some of it was hard to watch when I shared that video. But the reality is, is that not everything with homesteading is all rainbows and flowers, it's not. 
It's not always bountiful harvest. There are hardships. There are things that are going to happen that are stressful, that are going to mess with your emotions, that are going to stress you out. And that's just real life if you're going to do this kind of stuff. And so I think it's only right to be transparent and to try to educate you all as I've had to learn on the fly as well. Well, guys, you may be able to see behind me, but it is pouring the rain now. We were able to squeeze in an update on Big Mama so we could keep you all up to date on what's going on. Um, I'm here watching Little Man now too. I actually was able to squeeze this whole video in because I came home early from work today because of some child care issues. So he just woke up and it's pouring the rain now. So we're going to hope this rain will go away before we have to give her her afternoon shots. But nonetheless, I wanted to be able to say thank you to all of you all who have offered your support and prayers for Big Mama as we've been working through this. I want to thank a lot of you for all your advice. Now, what are you? You tell them. You tell them thank you too. I don't. Yeah. They worry about our piggy. The but guys, I just want to say thanks though for all you all that also gave some advice or some oh. some ideas of how we could treat her. It's been such a learning curve. Uh, we've learned a lot through this experience. There's been a lot of highs and lows. Right now, looks like things are heading up towards a high that will hopefully be maintained. But we'll be sure to keep you up to date on the progress with Big Mama. And as always, guys, we appreciate y'all's continued love and support. And until next time, guys, y'all be good. And we'll see you here very soon on one of our next episodes. Thanks, guys. You say bye? Bye. <laughs>